Mm, good, e- good evening, ma'am. Good, good evening, classmate. Well, we are group two. My topic is the principles of structural firefighting. This chapter will point out the main features of a good firefighting plan. Firefighting is, has been and always will be one of the main objectives of fire protection. A well-named, well-equipped, and well-trained fire department provides a solid base upon which effective firefighting depends the strategy and which effective firefighting depends the strategy and tactics and suppress fire evolve from this base. Structural, uh, structural firefighting, number one, initial procedure, letter A. Surrounding the alarm, the crew member who discover receives the fire alarm. Good evening, ma'am. Good sound the alarm promptly letter b the crewman who sounds the alarm must be sure to give the exact location of the fire information regarding the type of fire the exact location may indicate the need of past immediate response number two firefighting procedures strategy a size up the, the evaluation and observation of the fire scene of the following one class of the fire what combustible materials are burning? 2. The appropriate extinguishing agent to be used. 3. The appropriate method of attack. 4. How to prevent the extension of fire. 5. The required manpower and firefighting assignment. Letter B. Attack. The method of action to gain immediate control to prevent or minimize the extension of fire to explosion. Method of attacks. Number one, we have the direct method, and number two, we have the indirect method. C, we have the ventilation, types of be- ventilation. Number one, we have vertical ventilation, two, horizontal ventilation, three, mechanical force ventilation, and four, the, the combination of vertical and, and horizontal attack. And the expo- exposure, E, for extinguishment, an action method performed by firefighters as putting of fire by means of extinguishing agents such as water, chemicals, and foam. Letter F is rescue, letter G is overhaul, and letter H is salvage. The following are the strategies in firefighting. And Number one is the locating the fire. Two, confine the fire. Three, extinguish the fire or four, exposures. In addition to the basic tactics, the following are also at top. Number one, rescue. Number two, overhaul. Three, ventilation. Four, salvage. Location. Locating the fire sounds like a simple matter in an open lumber yard where flames are. Fishing up the sky, it is simple matter. But finding or locating a fire in a room, in a cellar of a three-story dormitory or building, which is filled with a denier smoke, is not any task. Confinement, confining the fire is the next step in strategy, judgment, skill, and experience must be must be used for the utmost to determine whether or not the fire is too routine or disaster. Conflict confining the simply means to restrict its spread to the point of the origin of these two our arms involved. Extinguishing. Extinguishing the fire may take as little water as the juice in booster line or it may thousands of gallons played through heavy appliances. The decision rests upon judgment, skill, training, experience of the office to charge. Factors to be considered in, in, in extinguishing time of day. A. The hour of the day can have a direct bearing on the life and the fire hazards involved. Letter B. Time also has a direct bearing on the s- speed of the responder of our fighting and the rescue vehicle. C. During hours of darkness, special lightning 
equipment may be needed. Night operation may require auxiliary power pipes or personal weather. Weather. Some of the weather factors that must be considered. A. Temperature. C. Humidity. B. Humidity. C. Wind and precipitation. The, direc the direction of wind determines where the greatest exposure dangers are located. High humidity means a smoky fire and difficulty in operating in the building with without true ventilation. In a situation where a pungent fumes or encountered more additional hardship and danger for the firefighters operating and fight fighting fire to the street and particularly in narrow uh, alleys at the fair sides of the building in fire. In this type of situation, it is frequently impossible to get in close enough to do inside work it is necessary to operate from the outside of the building unless suitable respiratory protects is provided. Reviewing the entire situation, there are also other factors which is excavation or other obstruction in the street in the immediate neighborhood of the fire that may have direct bearing upon a pressure of the fire department as well as the amount of apparatus and personnel that will be needed. Mm. Mm, that's all, ma'am. Thank you. Um, good evening, ma'am and classmates. Um, ang report ko is uh, sa group 2. Sunda kay Moika. Ito yung meron tayong 6 factors to be evaluated at the first scene. Um, Una-una, extent of fire. Pangalawa is location in the building, the type of contents involved, the life hazard, the life conditions, and the type of construction. Sa una, extent of fire, ito yung lawak na apoy na nasusakupan niya. Um, sa pangalawa, it's location in the building, ito yung kung saan nakalocate, um, kung saan location ng apoy na gagaling dun sa loob ng building. Letter C, the type of contents involved. Uh, ito yung nilalaman ng gusali or gusaling nasusunog. The life hazard, the life conditions. Ito, ito yung kung saan, uh, kung ano na ba yung condition, um, condition ng apoy or malaki na ba or grabe na ba yung sunog. Uh, types of contractions. Ito yung ano, uh, kung ano ba yung bahay bato-bato ba, or Good ba yung, yung gusali? Okay, okay, okay. Ito naman sa occupancy, determine the number of people that, that occupy the building, that materials are found. It, it also know the nature of the unit occupying the building. Siyempre, ah, uh, Dapat natin alamin kung ilan ba yung bilang ng mga tao dun sa loob ng gusali. Siyempre, kabilang din dun yung mga gamit or materials na magtatagpuan dun sa loob ng gusali. Dun mismo sa sumasakop kung ano ba yung mga nilalaman nun or kung ilan yung tao dun sa nasusunog. Ang pangalawa, ventilation is a mess. Method used for clearing the building of smoke or gases. Localize the fire and reduce smoke and forcible entry damage. Uh, yung ventilation, uh, isa, ito sa is isa ito sa isang pamamaraan na ginagamit para sa paglilinis para mawala yung uso at gases. Um, si para hindi rin syempre ano, persahan dun pumasok sa loob ng building. Tapos, meron tayo three types of ventilation. Ito yung vertical ventilation. The method, the method to establish vertical ventilation, it must be worked from the top and down. Heated gases and smoke rise to highest point and if confined will tend to mushroom or rise to highest point and if confined will tend to mush... Ay, tapos pala yun. For the highest point building exerting the heating effects on everything they touch. Um, so vertical ventilation naman, sila yung sa taas nag-uumpisa para yung init ng gusali at gas ay umakit pa dun sa taas. 
Then, para mabuksan yon isa ito sa, isa sa mga ginagamit nila para mabuksan yung roof or yung bubong is yung chainsaw upang mapabilis yung pagbubukas. Then, pag nabuksan na nila yun unti-unti, uh, may unti-unting usok doon na lalabas na makapal eh. Parang, ayun nga yung tiyatawag na mushroom, yung malaking usok na lalabas doon. Or madami, napaka, pagkatapos ng usok, meron doon apoy na susunod. The cross or horizontal ventilation, if the most end gases have not reached the higher level, cross ventilation can clear the building one floor at the time. Windows are the easiest and generally most available for the common types of building. But in this discriminate opening of windows, there can de defeat the purpose of ventilation. Dito naman sa cross or, cross or horizontal ventilation. At yung ano eh, ang cross ventilation nakasalalay sa hangin. Sa mga tuwid, minsan ito'y tinatawag na wind-induced ventilation. Tapos may parang ilalagay sila sa may gilid or sa may pintuan na ventilation na na sa pinto para pumasok yung hangin. Then yung usok lalabas dun sa gilid or sa mga bintana na nakabukas. Uh, mechanical or force ventilation, a process or, a process or method or ventilation whereby a device such as smoke ejector is utilized to remove faster excessive heat and dense smoke and confined building. Sa mechanical, mechanical or force ventilation, isa ito sa pamamaraan natin na kung saan sa pamamagitan ng smoke ejector ay map, mapapabilis natin mawala yung init or, or yung usok sa isang gusali. Ayan o, ito yung ano, ah, uh, Kung mapapansin nyo, ito yun o, no, sa vertical ventilation, ayan. Unti-unti nilang binubuksan. Then, ito yung smoke, ay mushroom, ay yung makapal na usok na lalabas doon. Ayan. Zara horizontal naman, ayan. Ito na, kunyari naglagay dito sila sa gilid, ayan. Gilid na ejector, tapos yung usok. mapupunta doon sa kabilang side kasi parang ilalabas niya na yon usok. Yan, kung mapapansin nyo sa picture. Ito naman yung smoke ejector. Ayan, no? para electric pan, pampawala ng mga usok. Ito yung, ano eh, smoke ejector, minsan ginagamit din ito sa mga kitchen eh, kapag nagluluto. ba diba, minsan, yung init kasi, di ba pag kulob, nagluluto ka mainit, kulob. Then, Magiging mainit yung area. Naglalagay sila ng smoke ejector para mawala yung init doon sa area ng kitchen or mawala yung usok. Ito naman. Meron tayong six factors to determine the location for the opening and ventilation. Location of the intensity of fire, highest point of the roof, direction of the wind, existing exposure. Extend the fire, obstruction. Siyempre, alam nyo naman na yan, di ba? So, dito na lang tayo sa step in the procedure or vertical ventilation. So, number one, check the condition of the roof support to make sure that they have been burned. They have burned away or a weekend to a point where there are possibility to collapse under your weight. Feeling the roof to hot spot helps you determine if the fire has reached the point of cause of weakening. Siyempre, check natin yung condition ng isang building or yung isang gusali. Isang gusali na susunod kung okay pa ba ito, kung kaya ba yung bigat natin or di pa ba ito bibigay. Kasi kung hindi natin, kung di natin ito i-check, baka may tendency yung pagtungtong natin doon ay bigla na lang din bumigay yung gusali. So, number two, plan away escape from the roof. In case of emergency, such as roof collapse, have left line, especially on a peak roof to prevent falling. Ito naman yung sa number two, ito yung pagpaplano kung paano tayo makakalabas dun sa taas. At kung sakali naman bumigay na isang bagay, syempre minsan alam din naman natin na pag alam mo nang bibigay yung isang gusali, di pa pag tungtong mo at pag konting galaw mo lang may nararamdaman ka ng 
parang gumagalaw dun sa ano, hahanap tayo ng ano, laugh line. Ito yung laugh line na ano, um, na pwedeng gamitin. Kunyari, for example, uh, lubid. Kunyari, may nakita ka dun sa roof na ano, lubid. Pwede mo yung gamitin para makalabas ka dun sa area. Then number three, use any available opening that are part of the roof construction such as sky lights or roof trap doors. Ito, maghahanap tayo ng open area kung paano tayo makakalabas. Halimbawa natin na-trap tayo sa kesame. Di ba minsan madilim dun, kulob or ano. Kaso dahil sa may nakita kang liwanag, pwede ka din dun, tendency, pwede ka dun makadaan or makalabas. Yan, na pwede natin labasan dun sa, sa taas. Number four, make certain pass away from the smoke and heat extend down through the ceiling of the room. A hole in the roof is no use for, ano to? Use, there is no relief for gases, heat, and smokes in the room below. Siyempre, sa number four, gumawa tayo ng daan, daan ng usok para umabot dun sa pinakataas ng kesa mesa ng silid. Kasi kung maliit lang yung butas na na gagawin natin, parang walang sibi para natin mapapaangat yung usok galing sa baba. So number five, the opening should be large enough to pro provide a rapid exit for the smoke and gases. Dapat daw ano, malawak yung paglalabasan ng usok para mas mapabilis ang pagwala ng usok at gases. Kasi kung sakaling maliit lang ito, ay mahirapan tayong maapula yung usok at may tendency din tayo, syempre, masopocate. Syempre, number six, work at the wind at your back, keeping the heat explosive characteristic and toxic effort of escaping gases. Um, kung sakaling sa investigation siya, dapat alam mo rin yung air na pumapasok kung kapag galing sa likod, kung galing sa likod mo, kung pwede ba siya maging reason na malakas yung apoy or um, pagkalat ng apoy tapos alamin mo din yung temperature ng heat. Dito naman sa characteristic sa characteristic naman ng explosive, dapat alam mo yung iba't ibang uri ng bomba. Halimbawa, kung ito ba yung time bomb or ginagamit ginagamitan ng cellphone para para sumabog yung kung ano mang pwedeng maging epekto ng toxic na makukuha mo dun sa fire scene. Um, Ayun lang po. That's all. Thank you, ma'am. And God bless. Good evening, Professor Eman Darl Concepcion. Good evening, classmates. Ito po yung na-assign na topic sa akin in Chapter 6. Ang titles niya po ay Steps in Procedure for Cross-Horizontal Ventilation. Advantages of ventilation, exposures, factors that contribute ignition to exposure, rescue, and hydraulic rescue tools. So, magsisimula tayo sa... Steps in Procedure for Cross-Horizontal Ventilation. Yung number one, um, open the windows on the leeward side first and then open the window on the windward side. So dito, i-open yung mga bintana sa gilid na sa bandang pay taas at yung bintana doon naman sa badang paliko ng bahagi. In number two, after one floor is clear, ventilate the next floor in the same manner. After maklear yung isang floor, proceed po sa next floor and also in the same manner. Number three, if at possible, avoid making opening below the level of the fire. Kung ma Kung maaari, iwasan ang pagbubukas sa ibabang parte ng isang bahay kung saan kung saan andun yung apoy. And number four, if the opening is made at the same floor level as the fire, hose lines should be available for immediate use. Kung ang pagbubukas ay ginawa sa same floor level, 
as the fire, yung hose lines ay dapat ay dapat magamit agad para sa pagpatay ng apoy. Number five, avoid ventilating a building in such a way that fire is withdrawn through any building part is not involved. Dito, iwasan po yung pagbe-ventilate ng isang building na kung saan ang apoy ay nag-withdrawn doon sa parte ng building na hindi naman involved. Number six, when, when making an opening exercise, great care to prevent the spread, the spread of the fire to exposures and have host lines available to protect exposures. Kapag yung isang building na, ay nasusunog at magsasagwa ng hakbang para buksan ng building, kailangan na maging maingat para maiwasan yung pagkalat ng apoy sa iba't ibang bahagi ng building kung saan ay may exposures na magaganap at yung host lines po ay may, ay may available para ay dapat available para maprotektahan yung mga possible na may expose sa apoy. Next. Ito po yung video kapag ginagawa yung ventilation proper Entering the structure to position the hose line or to search is horizontal ventilation. Mm. While improper, this action is a necessary evil and will have a negative impact on conditions. This will draw the fire to your location. Whoa. The modern fire environment is choking the structure. We must ventilate properly to make the building behave. This means venting as water is being applied or immediately after opposite of the advancing line. So venting for fire. What does it take? It takes discipline and patience. The outside vent team must wait for a radio transmission that the attack team is in place or until they see or hear signs of extinguishment. When choosing a vent location, you want to be opposite of the hose line and as close to the fire as possible. When this task is complete, report to command for your next assignment. Next. Entering the structure to position the hose line or to search is horizontal. Ayan naman po, kapag yung ventilation is hindi nagawa ng proper, ayan yung mayayari po. Mali yung... So, dito tayo sa advantages, ay, advantages of ventilation. Number one, AIDS rescue operations. Proper ventilation simplifies and expedites the rescue of victims by removing smoke and gases that endanger occupants, 
trap or unconscious and make the conditions safer for fighters. Dito, ang proper na ventilation ay nagpapadali at mapapabilis para sa paglig pagliligtas sa mga victims by removing smoke and gases na nagiging dahilan para mapunta sa peligro ang buhay ng mga victims o mga occupants or yung mga natrap doon sa loob at walang malay at sisiguraduhin na ang mga bombero ay safe sa bawat situation. Next. Number two. Speeds, attack, and extinguishment. The removal smoke, gases, and heat from the building permits for fighters to, re to move rapidly and locate the area and proceed with extinguishment. It will also reduce the danger of asp aspiciation. Na dito, ang mga bumbero ay pinahihin, tulutan, or pinapayagan na tanggalin yung smoke, gases, and heat ng, mabili ng may mabilisang pagkilos doon sa nasusunog na building at ilulocate nila yung area na possible na may apoy at ipagpapatuloy yung extinguishment na ginagawa nila para mabawasan para mabawasan yung panganib na magiging dahilan ng pagkakaroon ng aspiration ng mga victims. Pwede rin yung mga bombero magkaroon ng ganyan. Next, number three, rape. Reduce property damages. Rapid, rapid, rapid extinguishment of the reduces property damage. Di, ito yung mabilis ang pagpatay ng apoy mula sa nasusunog na property o bahay para mabawasan yung damage or yung pinsala sa isang property or bahay. Next. Reduces mush mushrooming. When sufficient heat is confined in the area, the temperature of combustible material rises to their ignition points. This material will not ignite, however, unless sufficient amount of oxygen is available to support combustion. In this situation, a very dangerous condition exists because the admittance of an air supply is all the needed to create the overheated area into an inferno or yung tinatawag nating backdraft. In order to prevent this critical situation from occurring, the top ventilation must be provided to release superheated fire gases and smoke. Dito naman, kapag yung heat ay nakulong sa isang area or na-confine sa isang area, yung temperature na nasusunog ng material ay pwedeng tumaas. Kumbaga, magkakaroon ng ignition. Yung material na ito ay hindi siya mag ignite basta-basta but unless the sufficient amount of oxygen is available to support the combustion. Sa situation na ito ay mag exist yung tinatawag na dangerous conditions dahil sa pagpasok ng dahil sa pagkakaroon ng air supply na needed para mabuo yung tinatawag na overheated sa area na tinatawag nating backdraft. Para maiwasan yung critical situation na ito, dapat gamitin muna ang top ventilation para mailabas yung pinakamainit na fire gases and smoke. Next. Exposures. An action taken by the firefighters to cover or secure other buildings, people from exposing them themselves near the affected area or danger from fire. Ito yung action na ginagawa ng mga firefighters para makover or secure yung iba pang buildings or yung mga tao na malapit sa affected area or sa lugar na may nasusunog. And next paragraph, fire, firefighters also use the term exposure hazard to identify a building that is not involved in a fire, but because of its condition, positions, or contents can become a hazard. Dito naman, yung mga firefighters, ginagamit nila yung term na exposure hazard para ma-identify yung mga building 
na hindi involved sa nasusunog. But dahil sa gantong kondisyon, positions, pwedeng maging peligro rin ito sa kanilang buhay. And third paragraph, the extent of hazard depends upon the size of exposure, the distance between buildings, weather conditions, and the exposure the exposure susceptibility to ignition. Yung lawak or laki ng peligro ay nakadepende sa laki ng exposures sa distance ng, ng sa, dis, sa, pag, sa distance ng bawat pagitan ng buildings and sa weather conditions and sa mga bagay na madaling madaling ma-expose or kapitan ng apoy. Fourth paragraph, exposed building can be ignited, ignited by radiated heat, by direct flame contact, by flying brands. The, the possibility of the ignition always exists, but the danger is more acute when large quantities of heat are produced. Dito, yung isang building na na-expose ay maaaring mag-ignite sa pamamagitan ng ra radiated heat, Um, direct flame contact or flying brands. May may possibility siya na mag, mayroon, ang pagkakaroon ng possible ignition ay laging nag exist but the, the danger is more acute when large quantities of heat are produced. Factors that contribute of ignition to exposure. Number one, the direction and velocity of wind. Ito yung direction at bilis ng hangin. Number two, the relative humidity of atmosphere. And number three, the distance between the building. The most important single factor in the potential danger from exposure hazard. Ito yung pina ito yung distansya sa pagitan ng dalo, ng buildings. Ito yung pinaka-importante na single factors dahil may potential dangers ito na nagkakos ng exposure hazard. Next. Types of exposures. Mayroon tayong dalawang types of, of expo, exposures. Yung number one, fire exposures. The property exposed to the fire, such as property, directly across alleys or besides the fire buildings. Ito yung mga uh, properties na na-expose sa, sa fire tulad ng mga properties na malapit sa eskinita or besides the fire building. Number two, life exposures. The danger to lives, the danger to lives of the occupants of any building that is in line with the travel of dangerous fumes, gases, thrown off by fire as well as to the occupants of any building that is seriously exposed to the fire from the building on fire. Ito yung panganib sa buhay ng mga nakatira sa mga building na nakahilera kung saan may mga nagtatravel na, na smoke or gases na itinapo ng apoy. Kung baga, pinagmalan ng apoy. Ah, binuga ng apoy, ganun. And kasama na rin yung mga nakatira sa mga building na talagang naka-expose sa apoy. Sa apoy or yung nasusunog na building. And all other firefighting actions, tactics, or tactics stem from this basic strategy. And next. Rescue. And first paragraph, any action taken by firefighters to remove occupants or persons from a burning building or hazards to a safety place. Ito yung um, mga actions na ginagawa ng mga firefighters para maialis yung mga nakatira or yung mga tao na mula sa nasusunog na building or, sa, or yung mga hazard to a safety place. Next paragraph. Second paragraph, in a very broad term, it may be light or heavy, it may involve first aid, resuscitator, or heart, heart lung resuscitation techniques, emergency childbirth, 
emergency childbirth or retrieving persons who has fallen or trapped down a well. In general, ang pagre-rescue uh, ang pagre-rescue daw uh, ma ay maaaring la ma ma light or heavy involvement dito yung first aid, resuscitator or heart lung, resuscitation techniques, emergency childbirth or yung pagkuha sa mga taong nahulog or natrap sa isang balon. Yun yung ano niya, definition niya in general uh, in very uh, in a very broad term. In firefighting naman, firefighting operation, it may be simple or complicated depending on the situations involving life saving. Maaaring simple or komplikado pero nakadepende pa rin sa situations na involve yung pagliligtas ng buhay ng tao. Sorry na pindot. Fourth paragraph, seizing up a res rescue situation takes into account the type of building, circumstances about the building and its contents, the time of day or night, the type of occupancy, whether the situation or emergency offers a, a, treat, a threat to life. Dito, ang pagsukat daw sa isang, sa isang situations, sa pag-rescue ay kinukonsider ang uri ng building, yung mga mga pangyayari sa building at yung oras kung umaga or gabi at saka yung type ng occupancy whether the whether the situational or or emergency uh, offers a threat to their lives um fifth paragraph specialized rescue technique and equipment are needed to extricate passengers trapped from vehicles or after an air, aircraft, aircraft crash. Ito yung ang technique at equipment ay uh, ang technique at equipment ay kinakailangan nilang gamitin para mailabas yung mga pasaherong na trap mula sa mga sasakyan o isang aircraft crash. Nam next Ito yung mga pictures, examples. Dito tayo sa hydraulic rescue tools. Ang hyd hydraulic rescue tools are used by emergency rescue personnel to assist vehicle extraction of crash victims as well as other rescue from small spaces. These, tool these tools include cutters, spreaders, and drums. They are popularly referred to United States, Canada, United Kingdom, and Australia as Joes of Life, a trademark of Hail Product Incorporation. Ito yung mga tools na ginagamit ng emergency rescue personnel to assess the vehicle extraction of crash victims. Kasama ang iba pang pag-rescue mula sa Malilit na spaces. Ayan. Ang mga tools na ito ay ang cutters, spreaders, and rams. And then, it is powered by hydraulic pump, which can, which can be hand, foot, or engine powered, even built into the tool itself. Ito yung engine, ano, hydraulic pump. Next paragraph. It may be either single action where hydraulic pressure will only move to the cylinder in one direction. One direction. In return to starting position is accomplished using a pressure relief valve and spring setup or dual acting in which hydraulic pressure is used to both open and close the Suzette cylinder. Yung ito daw ay maaaring single action na kung saan ang hydraulic pressure ay gagalaw lamang or magmumove lamang sa cylind sa cylinder sa isang direction ng cylinder. And and returning and return to starting position is accomplished 
gamit yung fresh relief valve and spring setup or dual acting na kung saan yung hydraulic pressure ay ginagamit sa parehong pag-open or pag-close ng Josette Cylinder. Next, previously rescuers open use circular saws so for vehicle extrication but this suffered from several drawbacks. So, saws can generate sparks which could start a fire, create loud noise which could stress the victim and are often slow cutting. Yung mga nakaraang mga rescuers daw, madalas na nilang gamitin is yung mga lagari. Yung ano yun? pabilog na lagari, paikot na lagari, ganun, parang ganun, na para sa vehicle extrication. But, ito ay nag nagkukos ng sparks. Nagkaaroon ng starting a fire. Nag um, Nagkikreate ng loud noise na nagiging dahilan para ma-stress yung mga victims at kadalasan ito ay mabagal lamang. Ito ay may mabagal na, ano? ito ay mabagal sa paggamit ng paggugupit. Na nagiging dahilan para mag-suffer yung mga rescuers at yung victims. Um, next, alternatively, rescuers could try to Pry open the vehicle doors using crow, crow bar or haligan, haligan bar. But this could compromise the stability of the vehicle or the injured the victims or unintentionally activate vehicle airbags. Dito naman, yung mga rescuers daw ay gumagamit ng ay gumagamit ng crowbar or haligan bar sa pagbubukas ng pinto ng vehicles. Pero, ito ay nagkaroon ng, ito ay nagiging dahilan para magkaroon o madagdagan ng, in, madagdagan ng injured ng victims at ito pa yung magiging dahilan para mabuksan nil, ay ma-activate nila yung, yung tinatawag nating airbags sa vehicle na hindi nila sinasadya. Next, in comparison, hydraulic spreader cutters are quieter, faster, and move in more versatile. They can cut open and even lift a car. The jaws of life derives its name from one of the co-inventors, Jack Allen Watson. When submitting, when submitting, submitting, here his drawing. He would often sign them with his initial Joe. Over time, the device came to be known unofficially within Hearst as Joe's and was later introduced as the Joe's of Life. Dito naman yung hydraulic spreader cutters ay mas quieter, faster, and more versatile. Um, they can cut open and even lift a car, kumbaga, pwede na nito may angat yung isang kotse. And the Joes of Life, ito yung nag-invent sa kanya, si Jack Allen Watson. Dinerive yung Joes sa isa sa mga co-inventors na si Jack Allen Watson. And next, the hydraulic spreader was originally developed in 1972 by Tim Smith who later develop a cutter and a hydraulic ram. When an occupant is trapped, the tool is used to pry or cut the car to remove the occupant. It takes about two minutes to take the roof of car. Yung hydraulic spreader daw ay originally na dinevelop noong 1972 ni Tim Smith kung saan siya din yung nag-develop ng cutter and hydraulic ram. Next, done. Done na pala. That's all. Thank you. Hi, Mom. Hello, classmate.
ang topic natin ngayon is parang ako na, wala pala ako nga uh, presentation hindi ko siya gumawa eh kaya nagbibig ano lang ako premier na ako ng ano without presentation bali ang topic natin ngayon is about culture The cutter is a hydraulic tool which is designed to cut to metal. It is often called a crab cutter, owing to the shape and configuration of its blades. Sometimes it's specified as to ease capacity to cut a solid circular steel bar. These are most commonly used to cut to a vehicle structure in extraction liberation ito yung kanilang ginagamit natin yung tools na uh, yung pangagin natin ay crab cutter kaya sa tinawag ng crab cutter kasi uh, yung hugis na is patulis tapos yung style na is ano uh, yung kamay ng crab tapos yun yung ano siya na may mga ipin Tapos, ano siya, uh, kumbaga, ang um, mga pinuputol lang niya yung mga solid circular steel ba. Yun lang po. Tapos, next, first cutter. Spader. Uh, spader is a hydraulic tool designed with two arms which have a narrow tip. The tip of the tool can be inserted into the narrow gap between two vehicle panels, such as between two doors or between a uh, door and a uh, fender when the tool is operated the arms are open drawing apart the metal and the panels spider are used to pop vehicle doors from their hands ito nga yung spider ito yung ano yung itong tools na to Ito yung, ano, uh, yung may tulis yung, tawag ito, yung dulo, tapos medyo malapad siya ng konti. Tapos, halimbawa, ano, sa pintuan, yung bisagra, ikapasok siya dun mismo sa may uh, pagitan o kaya yung puwang. Kung pinasok siya dun, Kung so, isang pagitan na yun, uh, tapos kinandar na tong spray the hydraulic tool. Ano siya, uh, unti-unti siyang, ano, unti-unti siyang bubuka. Yung mismong, ano, uh, yung mismong dulo niya para paghiwalayin or paputukin yung, ano, paputukin yung, yung, ano, ng bisagra. Paghihiwalayin siya. Next, ano ba yung sunod? Spreader cutters. Which uh, cutter or spreader tools is designed for particular application? A uh, combination tool is also available which combines the cutting and spreading function of separate tools in, in, into a single tool. In operation, the tips of the spread cutters blades are wedged into a seam or gap, for example, around a vehicle for vehicle door on device engage the hydraulic pump attached to the tool or as a separate until powers a piston that pushes the blade with great for force and spread the same on the once the same beam is spread the now open blades can be repositioned around the metal the device is engaged in reverse in the blade close cutting to metal repeating repeating wide enough to pull pre-trap victim the blade 
can be spread or cut with a force of several tons or kilonewtons. With the tips of the blades spreading up to a meter, this operation can also be performed by dedicated spreading and cutting tools which are designed especially for their own operation and may be required for some rescues. Ito naman, ma'am, ano, uh, tawag ito, yung pinag, ano na siya, pinagsama, sa, pinagsama, yung pagbukit at pagkalat ng, ano, uh, pagpapaandar ng magkahiwalay na mga tool. Halimbawa, sa, ano, sa paligid ng sasakyan, nakatoon tong, ano na to, ah, uh, tawag ito, ap aparato. Yung hydraulic na ano mam yung uh, bomba ay nakabit din sa tool bilang isang ano niya kiwalay uh, hanggang sa pinapagana ng isang piston na tinutulak mismo ng mga tinutulak ng mismo malaking pera. Ulit-ulitin nila to hanggang sa ano uh, hanggang sa tawag ito. Nga sa magbigay daan para maligtas yung ano yung tao na na ano uh, naipit Tsaka ano uh, ano matawag ito Ito naman yung ano yung puputol siya uh, kinakat niya kinakat niya yung ano halimbawa yung sa ano yung sa mismo ano lang sasakyan Okay, ano kailangan siyang putulin? Ayun ma'am, tapos uh, kumbaga ano Next na, uh, doon tayo sa ano, high pressure air dog system Saan ba nagamit yung ano, yung high pressure High pressure bug system Halimbawa, ano, uh, may naipit na isang tao na daganan ng, ano, ng pader. Yung bag na yun, nilalagay yun dun sa mismong ilalim kung saan naipit yung isang tao. Tapos, bubombahin yung, bubombahin yun hanggang sa, bubombahin yung bag hanggang sa, ano ba tawag nito? Hanggang sa magkaroon ng hangin at saka iangat niya yung pader na dumagsak doon sa tao kung saan naipit yung isang tao. Iangat niya yun hanggang sa bumuka. Bumuka yung ano, yung pader para ma mahila yung isang tao na naipit. Yun po yung purpose ng ano, ng airbags. Tapos, sunod niya, ano yung sunod na? Jaws of knife power unit. Power The tools of operate on the basis of the hydraulic oil pressure of up to 720 bar, which must be provided from a power source and person. There, there are three different means of generating the pressure. The most commonly used source is a uh, uh, separate power unit which is uh, a small small pet petrol engine connected to a hydraulic pump to uh, the oil is pressurized in the pump and convey a uh, force under pressurized to to the tool ito naman yung ano uh, yung nagpapatakbo sa ano yung dalawang binanggit ko na ano tool ko ano uh, mga yung equipment na ano binapatakbo siya ng ano ng ng pressure at saka sa ng langis na umaabot ng 720 bar ayun po tsaka ano uh, ano daw nito yung tatlong ano tatlong 
Huwag naman ka kaibang paan ng pagbuo ng mga question. Ang pinakaraniwang ginagamit natin ngayon yung ano, yung ano tawag nito? Magka, yung, yung isang magkahiwal na unit ng kuryente. Kapag saan ay isang maliit na engine ng ano, uh, gasolina na kumunta mo sa hydraulic pump. Yan po. Uh, next report na po ma'am. Thank you po. I'm being ignored to mga kadeterm kaysa sa group 2 at ang topics na na-assign sa akin ay breathing apparatus, overhaul, salvage at method for salvage covers. Breathing apparatus, a device that provide the user with an additional supply of air or breathing protection. SCBA, self-contained breathing apparatus, sometimes referred as compressed air, breathing apparatus or CABA or simply breathing apparatus or BA is a device worn by rescue workers, fire partners, and other to provide breathable air in a hostile environment. SCOBA, self-contained underwater breathing apparatus, designed used for underwater. CBA, typically has three main components. One, a high pressure tank. Two, a pressure regulator. Three, an inhalation connection. Two kinds of SCBA, closed circuit. The filter supplements and recirculates exhaled gas used when longer duration supply of breathing gas is needed such in mine rescue and in long tunnels. Before open circuit, SCBA were developed most industrial breathing set such as Chevy Gorman Proto, Chevy Gorman Savox, Chevy Gorman Salvus. Open circuit, industrial breathing set filled with filtered compressed air rather than pure oxygen. Open circuit system have two regulators a first stage to reduce the pressure of air to allow it carry it to the mass. Second stage is to reduce it even more to a level just above standard based on atmosphere pressure. The air is fed to the mass through a demand valve. Ang pagkakaiba ng dalawa ay ang hangin sa closed circuit ay umiikot lamang at sinasala galing sa air cylinder. Ito ay ginagamit sa matagalang proseso tulad ng mga rescue sa mga malalalim o mahabang tunnel. Samantalang ang hangin sa open circuit ay lumalabas galing sa exhalation valve tulad ng mga nakikita natin sa mga scuba divers. Ang bula sa gilid ng kanilang mas ay ang hangin na inilalabas nila. Parts of breathing apparatus. Face piece, an assembly that fits onto the face of the person using the breathing apparatus forming a tight seal to the face and transmitting air or oxygen to the user. Parts of face piece. A. Head harness. B. Flexible tube. C. Exhalation bulb. D. Lens. E. Nose cap. F. Speech diaphragm. G. Pressure relief bulb. 2. Regulator. A device that is used to control the pressure of air coming from the cylinder. Types. A. Demand type regulator. B. Positive pressure type. Regulator parts. A. Alarm. Whistle and bell. B. High pressure hose. C. Bypass bulb. D. Gauge. Number 3. Air cylinder. Parts. A. Pressure gauge. B. Control bulb. 4. Backpack or sling pack. Designed to hold the unit securely and comfortably on the wearer. Overhaul. A complete and detailed check of the structures and materials involved in the part to make sure the every spark and ember has been extinguished and to have assurance against re-ignition. Salvage, an action taken by the firefighter in the preventing excessive damage by fire. Smoke and water with the use of a salvage cover or by removing materials out from the burning building. Methods for salvage covers. Figure 58.1, salvage cover basin. Figure 58.2, window drain chute. Figure 59, stairway drain. 
Figure 60.1, counter payoff. Figure 60.2, one man cover throw. Ay ma'am, my topic is method for salvage covers. Salvage cover basin. Ito ma'am yung pag-cover dun sa mga kailangan protekta na bagay. Para hindi siya masunog or ma kung ano man nangyari pag, nas, pag nagkakasunog. Windows drain shoot. Ito yung, ito yung shoot na pang drain ng mga tubig. Stairway drain, ganun din. Ito yung mga ginagamit na pang, pang patuyo dun sa hagdanan. Sakaling may second floor man yung bahay. Halimbawa...
Good evening, ma'am. My topic is about host clam. Three type of very useful tool on any far vehicle. It can make a very quick connection to damage or unusual size mill host connections. On one side side of the adapter is a standard two and a half inch mill connection which national standard trends. The universal thread adapter. Ito yung, ito, kailangan na kailangan talaga to doon sa mga fire vehicle. Kasi ito yung nakakapag, ito yung nagagawa na ito, mapadali yung connection doon sa mga na-damage. Damage on hose jacket. A hollow cylindrical or barrel shape device that opens lengthwise through the center on a set of Yes. It is a rubber line to make it watertight when the jacket is clamped around the leaking portion of hose is over a leaking hose connection. The water is combined, confined by the hose jacket. These tools can prevent the displacement of the entire hose layout. They come in two and a half and three inch, three inch sizes. House clamp, a tool used to stop the flow of water in a firehouse without shutting off the source of water supply. Ito yung tool na ginagamit para may stop yung pagdaloy ng, ng, ng tubig dun sa, dun sa water supply na walang, na hindi mo siya sinashat doon yung pinaka, pinaka ano, yun pinaka water supply di mo sa siya na shutdown types of house clamp uses of house clamp stop the flow of water through through a house while host while a whole host lay is being completed ni-stop niya daw yung ni-stop niya yung pagdaloy ng tubig dun sa cost cut off the flow of water in charge line in a charge line yun din parang ganun din replace a busted hose without shutting down a water supply yun nare-replace yung hose nare-replace yung busted hose sa na kahit hindi mo na i-shut down yung water supply. Extends house line while shutting down the water supply from the clamp house. Hose. Advances a char charge hose line upstairs. Apply the hose clamp to a section of hose approximately 6 feet for the compling. Ayun na lang po. Maraming salamat po. Good evening, ma'am. My topic is about host clamp. Three type of host clamp. Screw down, press down, hydraulic down. General rules in using host clamp. Apply the host clamp at least 20 feet from the pumper apply the hose clamp at least 5 to 6 feet from the coupling on the incoming water side stand to one side when applying or releasing the stand to see to side when hose clamp as the handle has 
tendency to snap open suddenly place the hose in the center of the jaws jaws to avoid punching the hose close and open the hose clamp slowly to prevent water hammer spanner which and hydrant reaches spanner which is used to tighten leaking connection connection and loose connection that are too tight to break with hands alone can be used as with for praying praying it has a slot for filling nails and a flat surface for hammering hydrant which which are used to open and close fire hydrant and to remove hydrant outlet caps some are designed to tight, tighten or loosen coupling connections in is usually preferred with a pentagon opening in its head, head that fit most standard fire hydrant opening nuts adjustable hydrant which is made up of high strength doctor steel wheel with hand handle made of plate plated alloy steel universal spanner which is an all for force which featuring bell hook eye gas cook shut shut up and cloa folding pocket spanner is a compact folding spanner for rocker lug or lug coupling hose strap it is a 36 inch length of cloth strap with a handle on one end and a hook on the other it is used for moving hose layouts usually up ladders or staircase roof it is a safety line used for hosting tools for various floor of structure and used for adjuring to stationary object ladders charge hose lines and other accessories assist of 100 foot length of three three fourth manila hem group with the one eye splice in one end hose bridge hose ram a hose tool used to pre prevent damage to the hose when vehicle cross a street or where the traffic cannot be diverted <clears throat> jumping block tools used to prevent damage to the house where the house is subjected to rubbing from vibration rubber mallet hose tool used to strike the large of coupling to tighten or loosen the coupling without damaging the light the lugs used to make a coupling completely all right that's all man. magandang gabi sa inyong lahat mga ka-online bali ang napunta sa aking topic page 36 to 39 cost roller and cost appliances cost roller these are host tools used to prevent damage to host line when it is being dragged over sharp object such as roof edge and window sills 
the host appliances. A host appliances is any piece of hardware used in conjunction with delivering water. And these are the four example of host appliances. Number one, bulbs. The flow of water is controlled by use of virus bulbs in host line, hydrant, and at the pumpers. This bulb includes in four categories. First, ball bulbs. It's open when the handle is in the line with hose and close it at the right angle to the hose. These are used in dividing, breaching, or pumper, discharge, and gateways. So, and the second one, gate bulb. These are used to control the flow from a hydrant. It has a baffle that is moved by a handle. Third, butterfly bulbs. It uses a flat baffle operated by a quarter turn handle. And these are used to large large pump intakes. And the last one, clapper bulbs. The clapper is a flat disc that is high on the side and and swing in, in a door. These are used in Siamese. Bulb devices increase or decrease the number of post line operating at the fire ground. Way appliances divide a host line into two or more lines. Most common pod have one to two and a half inch inlet and two to one and a half inches outlet. Siamese appliances consist of two or more host line brought into two host line. Typically, Siamese appliance has two or more three female connection coming into the appliance appliance and one male discharge. May be equipped with or without a clapper bulbs. Commonly used to overcome the problem caused by friction loss in host lay. Can add additional lines on the fire ground hydra hydrant bulbs. Used when a host line is made from the water supply source to the fire scenes. Allow the supply line to be connected and the hydrant to be changed before the arrival of another pumper. The supply pumper may connect to the hydrant and pressure may be boosted in the original supply line without having to interrupt the flow of water. Pitting. Available for connecting hose of different sizes and threads. An adapter is pitting for connecting hose clamp, clamp links with the dissimilar threads but with the same inside diameter. The double male and the double female adapters are probably used more than any other special host appliance. Example, used when camplings are the same sex. A reducer is used to extend a larger host line by connecting a smaller one to the end. Other pitting includes elbows, change the direction of flow, Host cap, close of male camplings, host plug, close of female camplings, and the last one, intake devices. Sanction host strainer are intake devices attached to the drafting end of the hard sanction used to keep from entering the fire pump. Ayun, natapos na tayo. Thank you mga ka-online. Magandang gabi.